and my kidnapper had so far been patient with me, even when I had been slow to respond. So he wanted me alive, maybe even uninjured. He hadn't slapped me awake, after all. But it was possible he was worried about me making noise and alerting the neighbors. My kidnapper was a professional. The silencer on his gun was top of the line, and he had been hired by someone who did their research and realized I was the weakest link in my family. Maybe I was being taken by an enemy mafia family? I tried to stay analytical as the platform lowered to the ground, and I was escorted out of it and across the street to a black limo on the other side. I took a deep breath. Don't panic, Elsie. If you panic, you're as good as dead. My kidnapper opened the limo door for me. Someone was inside, but I couldn't see well with the interior light turned off. I went inside the limo, and the door slammed shut behind me. I flinched a little with the loud sound. The light turned on, and I looked into the face of a handsome man dressed in a three-piece suit and tie. Hello, Elsie, he said, his voice pleasant. He looked familiar, and I realized he had been at the house several times over the years. I remembered him and my father lounging in his study, drinking whiskey while talking business. Everything had always been cordial, but there had been a bit of underlying tension underneath. It looks like that tension had finally reached the surface. I couldn't remember his name, though. It slipped my mind. Good morning, sir, I said, hoping I could cover up my forgetfulness with politeness. A small smile tugged at his lips. It's not quite morning yet. It's only half past eleven. I must admit I was surprised you still go to bed at nine every night. I flushed a little. A lot of my friends made fun of me for having a bedtime as if I was a child. But if I stayed out past nine, I felt awful. I was tired and my mood wouldn't be great the next day. It was like I needed the stability of the same bedtime every night. To what do I owe the pleasure of this unexpected visit? His smile grew wider. I can see that finishing school your mother sent you off to was money well spent. But you don't have to be so polite to me. I am kidnapping you after all. A jolt of panic hit my chest. I knew I was being kidnapped because there was no other logical explanation but having him say it made it all seem so real. I forced my breathing to stay even. Think, Elsie. Gather information. Are you planning to kill me, sir? He shook his head. I won't kill you, Elsie. You have my word. He studied me for a second. Do you remember my name at all? It's been a few years since we last spoke. I bit my lip. No, sir, I admitted. I tried to stay out of my father's affairs as much as possible. He nodded. I know. I'm sorry I have to do this to you, but unfortunately there's no other way. My name is Tony. I promise you'll be safe with me. My quarrel is with your father, not with you. He sounded sincere. I relaxed a fraction. Are you planning to kill my father? Tony paused for a minute, contemplating. I don't want to, he said. I don't enjoy killing. I knew he meant that. I also knew what he didn't say. He would kill my father if he had to. I looked down at myself, dressed in only a flimsy nightgown with bare feet. I wished I had gone to bed in my flannel pajamas. I would at least feel a little less exposed in that. Where are you taking me? I asked. He smiled softly. To my home. 